greetings to all of you i welcome you all for today's lab session today we are going to see izard impact testing see basically in engineering applications we are using mild steel as a member for engineering constructions but most of the times we see the service load in different way for example one may be a gradually applied load one may be impact load or another one may be suddenly applied load we encounter these type of loads in our engineering practice so any material which is whichever is used should have sufficient impact strength then only it is useful acceptable for engineering constructions so if at all before failure if it is absorbing more impact strength it means that it is very suitable for engineering applications it has wide usage any industry will have such application and this type of testing facility to just manage to certify that this material is suitable for engineering applications that may be used for components things like that basically the standards used for this particular one is a370 for astm and uh, e23 is also used for the purpose any industry the typical engineering industry will have this type of facility to test and certify it is useful for engineering applications so what we are doing is we are trying to create a rectangular sample the sample the total height is 75 mm the cross section is 10 by 10 that means 10 mm by 10 mm by 75 mm and we are going to create a notch the notch is 2 mm width and things like that at 45 degree so that the notch is made ready right so the sample is to be held firm against this particular setup and a test is going to be performed so before entering into that this particular equipment is called a izart impact testing machine and we need to go to learn about this what is this equipment what are the main parts how are we going to perform the experiment and things like that before performing any experiments you should know what are the plus minuses of that experiments that is the limitations the usage place and things like that your safety is the most important thing so there is a fence here that is shown here no student is expected to enter into the fence area because this is basically a dynamic experiment where this head is going to oscillate like anything so if anybody is going inside it may be a safety issue to avoid that you should not enter into this fence that is a important thing that you need to know before start of the experiment so this is your uh, izard charpy impact testing machine you see there is a base which is uh, being foundation is made very properly and uh, this is your column this is a rigid column and there is a dial you see in the dial basically there are two types of values are mentioned one is outer the another one is inner the inner one is called the izard impact test values and the another outer one is called charpy impact test values both can be performed in the same machine that is what the thing now and there is a projection on which this uh, hammer is just added here it's a pendulum type of hammer and this is added here with the particular setup and this is a proper setup at 90 degree it is held firm okay and things like that so this is your brake lever see here you can move this so while you want to control the speed you can make this particular thing and this is what is called anvil right this is called anvil and this is your uh, specimen holding place vice right and the specimen is to be held firm here by allen key the allen key is this this is an item of allen key and with which we are able to fix this particular things like that we can do this this is your vernier caliper so you can measure this length dimensions and all if needed whether it is according to the astm standard or not so it is the height is going to be 75 the breadth and width is going to be 10 10 that is 10 by 10 by 75 so now we are we can measure this particular thing see here we need to measure we need to measure the length below the v notch let it be say 8 mm as the depth is 2 mm we will make this particular thing into fixing 
then after that the 28 mm is going to project and uh, the hammer will be facing this north side that is the uh, importance of this particular isa test that is most important thing to you need to know see this hammer will come and hit here against this notch there are two sections of experiment one will be without sample another one will be with the sample okay what is that i am explaining now now this particular dial is which is movable i am bringing it to this position fine so it is showing 168 according to isart scale let it be this is your uh, position right now what i am going to do i will explain the principle now there is no sample added here when i release this what will happen is it will come to this zero position it will come to this zero position that means it has consumed zero joule of energy of course it is understandable because there is no sample here and there is no energy that is absorbed here therefore it is it will come to zero so your initial reading will be zero joules okay then what you do you take this sample 28 mm projection outside and 47 mm going inside so you have to face see this hammer will come and hit here like this against the notch that is very important so if you miss the thing now the values will be changing so against the notch you have to clearly fix this so that this it come and hits this is what the objective and after making this i will release this again again this i will release this particular pendulum it is of course this is with large weight right so therefore it is going and uh, coming and hitting while hitting what happens it breaks while at that time for breaking it requires some energy that energy is being shown here it may be 20 joules something like that or 30 joules according to the material we will do that then after that we will find no initial value is zero that is reading one final value is say 20 that is reading two reading two minus reading one that is going to be the energy consumed for this breaking of this particular object now we have calculated the consumed energy for example 20 to 0 means 20 minus 0 will be 20 joules that is consumed then what is the cross section so before experimenting we have to do this particular one see this notched area that one we are needed that means there are two parts here unnotched place and notched place so using vernier caliper you have to measure the cross section that is area below the notch okay then interesting part will be the energy consumed per mm square base we have to calculate therefore what is the energy consumed energy consumed is final reading minus initial reading that is 20 divided by the area below the notch that is going to be the energy consumed per mm square this is what thing also we can find some more thing what is the velocity with which it is hitting the target the target is the sample right so what is the velocity it is targeting that also we can find using some formula how the things are uh, things are done we will do one by one we are now we will perform the experiment our aim is to find what is the energy consumed also what is the velocity with which the striker is hitting another interesting point i will tell you when we move what is the scientific principle behind this particular idea means when i move to this place that means i am increasing height what happens potential energy is increased what is the formula for potential energy you all know that it is mgh correct or not the mgh is increased so now when i release this because of this weight and things like that it is going to oscillate correct or not it is not going to exactly come and sit stand here right so what is going to happen it is going to oscillate like this while it is coming to this place what happens see this potential energy is converted as kinetic energy see here potential energy is high here kinetic energy is high so all the potential energy is converted as kinetic energy and further it is going to convert as potential energy again kinetic energy and things like that so it is going to oscillate so that is why it is called the dynamic experiment what do you mean by dynamic experiment the quantity that changes with respect to time that is known as the dynamic quantity right so that is a dynamic experiment that we are performing now so we will do the experiment very slowly so our aim is to find two ideas what are they for that see first one initial level reading final level reading with respect to joule after that we will me already measured cross section we will have based on that energy consumed per mm square we will decide then after that what we will do using a formula say this is let me call this is say alpha then what is going to happen so it is going to go like this what angle it goes that we have to measure for that there is some formula so we will develop that formula we will develop that beta 
based on that alpha and beta we will use another formula to know the striking velocity with which the sample is being hit so we will find the velocity with which it is hitting and the energy consumed this is what the overall expectation from this particular experiment we are going to perform the first level of experiment as i told you this is at 90 degree so this is your releasing lever so this support whatever the additional support we are trying to make it this position so that on moving this the pendulum will move down this is what the idea now there is no sample attached here you see this this is your 168 mark level it is fixed now now i am going to release the lever now i apply the lever like this i mean brake lever so it comes to stop it is to be done immediately for the safety of you right now you notice this comes to zero level when it is at 90 degree it will come to zero level when at some other angle it will go up to this level that is your eyes are another test now this level it is zero the first level of experiment is over what is the reading now please make a note this is zero zero is the reading one okay now we will perform the second level of experiment this is your sample the length is 75 the cross section is 10 by 10 and the v notch is made here v notch is 2 mm by 45 degree and the v notch is made at the height of 28 here and 47 here the 47 will go inside the vise see this i am keeping this i am held just a so closely you have to make make a little bit of tight using this allen key that's all fine see this the v notch is facing the hammer the hammer will come under exactly hit here that is what the thing now now we are entering to the calculation part of this particular experiment our aim is to determine the impact strength of the given specimen for this the apparatus required are pendulum type impact testing machine and vernier caliper now this in this pictorial view we can see the machine some of the few parts are mentioned in this scale hammer etc see the material where it is the sample is held that is nothing but your vice now this is about the sample dimension okay according to astm a370 and e23 the sample is done there is a notch there the notch is done for 28 mm distance the notch depth is 2 mm what is the overall sample size 10 by 10 by 75 but the notch depth is 2 mm when it is taken as 2 mm at 45 degree the 45 degree means if you take one line center line left side 22.5 right side 22.5 like that the sample is made and uh, as the depth is about just 2 mm the total is 10 so what is the balance that is available that is 8 mm that is going to resist the particular load therefore the cross section that we can think of this 10 by 8 am i right let us see the table now when i do not add the sample that time the initial reading is 0 i already told you why when there is no material it cannot consume any energy for that reason that particular display it came to zero level you can notice that what is this angle of fall refers to this is 90 degree that means with respect to isot test the alpha angle is always at 90 degree what is final reading r2 r2 is 20 why it is 20 now the sample is added the hammer is hitting and some energy is taken out to break the sample so that is shown as the reading that is 20 joules so what is the energy absorbed or impact energy that is nothing but reading 2 minus reading 1 that is 20 minus 0 equal to 20 what is impact strength impact strength is that is nothing but you can define like this right impact strength is energy consumed divided by area resisting that particular load the area resisting is nothing but area below the notch area below the notch is 80 i mean energy absorbed is 20 so 20 divided by 80 equal to 0 0.25 joule per mm square unit you have to be careful joule per mm square now some more observations we are making the length of pendulum r is 
0.815, it is the manufacturer data. Say this data will change from one manufacturer to the other. The angle of drop for this experiment is 90 degree. The weight of the pendulum is given as 21.02 kgf, kilogram force. So, it is the MKS unit. We are converting this to mass in SI unit. See, the weight number in MKS, mass number in M SI, both will be same. So, mass is 21.02 kg. All the above data are manufacturer data with for this particular experiment. Area of the specimen below notch is given by 10 by 8 equal to 80 mm square. Impact strength is given by absorbed energy divided by area that is nothing but 20 by 80 equal to 0 0.25 joule per mm square which we tabulated earlier. Some more formulae we can further go on. See now, now I need to explain about alpha and beta. For example, at the start of the experiment, the hammer is taken to 90 degree position okay? and what is beta? See when the sample is being hit, some energy is consumed for that. So, the hammer will rise to little bit less level to the other side, correct or not? So, it is an oscillating experiment. Therefore, one side it is alpha, another side it is beta. So, the beta will be lesser than alpha. What should be the rise that we can find this using this experiment, I mean particular formula. What is the formula? U equal to WR into cos beta minus cos alpha in bracket. Okay? So, what is impact energy? 0.25. What is W? Mg that is 21.02 kg into 9.81 that product will give you weight and R is 0.815 cos beta the beta value we are interested. What is cos alpha? Alpha value is 90 degree. I am substituting alpha value 90 degree here. I am calculating for beta. Beta is 89.91 degree. You have to make a note now. Alpha is 90 degree but beta is little bit lesser 89.91 degree. Why it is happening? Because some energy is consumed in breaking the sample. That is why the beta is less, correct or not? And further we can go, we can find the striking velocity. The striking velocity is impact velocity that is given by square root of 2gr into 1 minus cos alpha. So, you know g value substituted 9.81, r is 0.815 and alpha is 90 degree substituted. Calculation made which is coming as 3.998 meter per second. That means the hammer is coming and hitting the sample at a speed of 3.998 meter per second. Okay. Finally, we have completed the experiment. The result we have to tabulate now. The impact strength of specimen is 0 0.25 joule per mm square and the impact velocity is V that is 3.998 meter per second. Today, you have learnt about how to use the impact testing using the ISAR technique in which we are getting the energy consumed by the material to break or so. The higher the energy is going to be the useful one for our engineering applications. Generally the engineering materials may be mild steel for most of the engineering constructions, sometimes composites also for each and everything these type of tests are important and it is a very playing a very vital role. Thank you.